In 2002, a cast and crew was assembled for an ambitious film project to create a love story set against a backdrop of war and humanitarian relief work. Welcome to the making of Beyond Borders. During five months of filming, we would travel thousands of miles, working in three very distinct countries. Our journey begins here in Montreal, Canada. The director, Martin Campbell, and his cast and crew are here to recreate the war-torn capital of Chechnya, Grozny. And Decker action! The scope of Beyond Borders was to be epic. A love story spanning three continents over ten years, with each era requiring a very different look. We're currently on the set of um, um, the Grozny Streets, and Montreal City is just over in the background there. So it's a very uh, convenient location, right close to downtown Montreal. And in Chechnya in 1995 was the first sort of war between Russia and, and Chechnya. And part of our action takes place uh, in the streets of Grozny. So it's taken us about four or five months from scratch to turn this old sugar mill um, into the streets of Grozny. Basically, it was uh, an old industrial area that we've added certain elements to to give it shape and form. And we did a lot of research and got uh, um, photographs and uh, information of, uh, of what Grozny actually looks like. And we've tried to sort of uh, keep that devastated look throughout the, the whole area. These additional buildings that we've added here, um, uh, this in particular is the cinema uh, that we got uh, actually from a photograph in Grozny. And I couldn't believe some of the photographs that we saw, the amount of devastation, to be honest. And uh, it was quite, you know, quite a shock to see how much the place had just been flattened, really. I think it's amazing. I think we all kind of we all felt. Uh, I think it's it's as an actor, it's it's amazing, and and as in a production way, I think it's it's just great. And I'm so impressed with the, with the, the all the departments that did it. And as a as a person, it's it's a. Uh, I think for for everybody, it's really creepy. And there there are many people on set which we've discovered, which has been happening all through this film. But um, I was talking to somebody yesterday who was sitting next to me and said that it reminded him of when he was in Sarajevo. So they are they are all from these countries, and they all came here because of situations like this. So it's I don't know. You'd have to ask them, but I'd be curious whether it's just a horrible memory that haunts them forever and they can't forget. Um, I don't I don't know. So I'm, I'm hoping it's not a bad experience for them. Oh, toujours. Yeah, toujours. so he, when, he's, when he arrived on the set, he's, uh, he, he, for him, of course, it's not at all the Hollywood business. It's, uh, it reminds him what happened. And he, uh, he just said that he, he, at the first time, at the first sight, it was very hard on him because all that reminds him everything. And uh, now it's okay. Now it's, uh, it's, it's the movie, but uh, the, the first reaction was to feel back in time over there. And what we're trying to do uh, here is to create the illusion of a, of a drabness, of a city under conflict, uh, a city burning, a city uh, in war, basically. What I'm also doing is actually creating a slightly different look uh, by um, uh, treating the negative in such a way that it drains the colour 
and it also creates more contrast and a slightly grainy look, which is a slightly newsreel feel. And to keep that going, I've now got uh, most of the cameras are all handheld, so this is a slightly sort of unnerving sort of thing to everything that's going on. So it gives that more tension, and uh, the audience themselves can feel that you know that any, something could happen at any moment, which is what we're trying to say. It's very difficult doing making a realistic film in that when the action or the stunts you've got to make them really real it's really difficult we did it really extremely well on um, saving private ryan and that's the sort of look we're going for you see where the bullet hits are here yeah as he's sort of slip sliding here the camera be about here bang bang that's the sort of timing the whole shot is only going to last about eight seconds people aren't flying a million miles in the air or doing a double somersault or anything like that it's really very, very realistic. War isn't nice, uh, and you've got to really show it in that light. And it all happens very, very quickly. Probably what we're doing here, we're spending a week here, it's going to end up like 60 seconds on screen. It's trying to find new camera techniques, really, to film the action. That's how you're going to make it look different. Put an audience there, like, like with this, we're, we're filming at doco start. So it's, it's, it's moving cameras as if you're in amongst all the explosions. To recreate the frozen wilderness of Chechnya, the crew traveled north. This is Quebec midwinter. It's exceptionally cold and bleak, which makes harsh working conditions for the crew, but looks completely believable on screen. No, it's fabulous. The look is fantastic. It looks like nothing you've seen, and that's what we wanted. You could try and do it inside, but it never looks quite the same thing. So you go outside. You know, a lot of people are scared of it. We're not. We know what we're doing. It's just a pain in the ass. Just collapses. The breathing is. <sighs> and you're right up close here, Angie. As soon as that happens, come, yeah. You come it, back. it helps so much as an actor when the conditions around you are real, and and this is really cold, and this is, you get that sense of what it's really like. Um, so it couldn't be better in a certain way. Stand by. Roll cameras because we've been talking to lots of different people about what it's like in these conditions. And we've been out here and we've got heat packs on and so many different things, but I can't imagine it making, you know, making a run for it in this kind of situation. It's, it's beautiful, but it's trying to survive in it. I, I don't know how anybody does it. <laughs> The main problem is the weather. That's definitely that. So, for example, when we arrived this morning, it was minus. Uh, it was minus 20 degrees. When you add the wind, it can go minus 40 degrees, minus 30 degrees. And uh, I can't, haven't been able to shoot any wide shots yet, simply because we are, as you can see, we're clouded in, and uh, there's no views. Actually, there's some wonderful views if it clears. So we're waiting on that. Nicole, we are with the, all the changes of the weather. Sometimes it was sunny, sometimes it was windy, sometimes it was snowing. That's our director and our DPs are went a little bit uh, crazy about. It. <laughs> Well, here we are. We're fogged in. We're fogged in for the whole morning. We've uh, all shot a couple of um, close-ups of gun barrels firing. So here we are doing close-ups of snipers' rifles. So uh, and the whole unit is standing around. We're fogged. We're snow. We're everything else. So um, everything's normal. <laughs>